Tank cleaning technologies, there are several of them. And today we have Bo Jensen, the chairman of the EH Working Group Tank Cleaning with us. And he's going to cycle us through different types of tank cleaning techniques and also tell us a bit about the new EH guideline document 51 on the hygienic design requirements for tanks. Bo, great to have you with us today. Thanks for joining. No problem, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here again. All right, let's dive right in and look at uh, these different techniques that can be applied to clean a tank in the industrial food processing setting. So for any type of tank cleaning, you would need a supply pump to the tank cleaning device that could sit at the top of the tank, as you see here in this uh, video. And here we see the static spray device, which is the, the traditional way of uh, tank cleaning with, uh, that has the holes in the, the circle part. And you apply a pressure for around uh, two bar to these static spray devices that then kind of showers the whole tank in at the same time and generates these uh, footprint spots you see here uh, in the, the yellow soil that's on that's shown in the tank. Uh, and as the time goes, uh, then the footprints will clean and the free falling film will clean the surface too. For the rotary spray head, as you see here, you have a few slots in a spherical shaped ball as well, which is on ball bearings. And when you flow water through this uh, vertical shape, then the ball will start to rotate and you have these fans or droplets going out and hitting the tank surface so that you clean part of the tank and then you rotate this cleaning pattern at a certain speed uh, that relies on the, the design of the spray device. Um, so this gives it more effective cleaning because you have higher impact from the droplets hitting the, the soil. This one is the rotary jet head that has, in this case, uh, four jets are sitting on a nozzle head. And the design of the machine makes the nozzle rotate in a figure eight pattern, as you can see here, removing soil by these high intensive jets uh, coming out of the, the spray device. And they travel at a speed of around 30 meters per second at five bar. So it's a, a high impact that uh, generates cleaning in the impact zone, but also in the so-called footprint zone, there's high uh, wall shear stress cleaning taking place, uh, giving a faster uh, cleaning if you have soil that are really stuck to the surface. This also has a smaller, uh, amount of uh, uh, water usage uh, because uh, the time is less and also the flow rate is less for the rotary jet head compared to the rotary spray head and also the, the static spray device. Uh, the static spray device has the highest flow rate and cleans for the longest time and the rotary spray head has the second largest uh, water usage or flow rate uh, and cleans for like an intermediate time and then the rotary jet head for the shortest time and also on the shortest uh, flow rate uh, through the machine. Uh, so instead of cleaning the whole tank at once as with the static spray device, we clean it in in spots with the rotary jet head, but with very high uh, forces in the areas that are cleaned, and therefore we can reduce the amount of water used. Thank you, Bo. Very insightful. I guess the choice for which type of cleaning technique to apply very much also depends on the type of food or beverage product that uh, is processed through these tanks, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and. And of course, uh, we would like to promote uh, the most advanced ones because we think they are the smartest because we can save water usage. But we know that for a lot of uh, simple soils, uh, it's it's best to just use the static spray device because it also makes a fast cleaning and a good cleaning. If it's, uh, for example, skim milk uh, that has not been dried to the surface, then it cleans very easily with just putting water onto the surface. Um, and they, that would be sufficient. Uh, for more heavier soil application, the rotary spray head could be used. Uh, um, but for those where you have really heavy soiling that has been dried to the surface, uh, then you need to go to rotary jet heads. Uh, the rotary jet head can also be used for the more simple applications by running it at different speeds and so on, uh, depending on how the, the, the device is designed. Uh, so uh, so there are possibilities to use rotary jet heads for, for all kinds of of the cleaning situations, but if you look at it from a cost-benefit view, then uh, certainly all three of them has their uh, position in the industry. Mm. Now, how can eH guideline document 51 contribute or help our viewers to find uh, their perfect solution? We made a kind of a selection table to guide uh, end users in a direction of which type of uh, tank cleaning machine they should select depending on uh, easy to soil, medium to soil or heavy to soil. Uh, and also what, what are their focus? Is it on saving water, saving time or saving uh, energy or and or what type of pressure do they have if it's an existing uh, plant that they have uh, set up? So, uh, so that's a good place to start with this table to try and look through that and see uh, what, what what does the table recommend you to choose and then have a dialogue with the manufacturer of the devices. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Let's talk about operational aspects like maintenance, for example, for a minute. Uh, I can imagine that a jet rotating system requires more intense maintenance efforts than a spray ball, for example. How do these different techniques relate to maintenance efforts? Yeah, of, of course, they need maintenance and they need to have some uh, wear parts uh, exchanged, uh, the road through jet heads, uh, many of them. Um, but we know they can run for a long time if, if, if treated well and if you don't have a real harsh environment, not too many uh, particles that can wear down the surfaces and so on. Um, so so that is something you need to take into account when you look at the, the total cost of ownership of the, the road through jet heads compared to static spray devices, at least. Uh, but also one has to remember that if you just put in a static device and you don't think about the maintainability, then you have to think about to take it out now and then to check that you don't have a lot of uh, debris sitting inside of it because actually it acts like a strainer in your system, the CIP loop. Uh, so so even though there's no moving parts, you still have to um, to monitor flow rate and stuff like that and, and now and then take it out to see if you have anything sitting inside that uh, you don't want there and that can um, endanger your product quality. Of course, Bo, many people watching this already have a legacy system in place. What type of uh, retrofitting options do they have with regard to these different techniques? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, for the retrofitting part, there are, there are different aspects of this. Uh, and one is, of course, that you should be able to, uh, to put the spray device onto hopefully the same downpipe as you had before. Um, and for the from a static to a rotary spray head, that is uh, possible in most cases. Uh, we do it, and our our colleagues uh, in the industry also have the same process connection as you have with the static spray device. For rotary jet heads, uh, often you need a, a more stable uh, connection than than what you normally use with the static spray device and a rotary spray head, which is often attached to the downpipe with a slip joint and a pin connection. Uh, but for the road through jet heads, you would have a, a threaded connection that is hygienically designed so uh, so you don't get any product uh, into the thread, both on the inside and uh, of the supply tube and also on, from the outside, from the tank, of course. What about the pump systems required to run these different cleaning techniques? Uh, what kind of water pressure is required for each of these techniques? Uh, for static sprays, you normally run it uh, around two bar and then at a high flow rate. Um, and the same with, um, with rotary spray heads, a little bit less flow rate, but still at two bar. Uh, but for the rotary jet heads, you normally go to up to around five bar. And in some cases, you might need a different pump to be able to supply the five bar. But oh, luckily, it's at a lower flow rate, so you might be able to go with the same pump. When you reduce the flow rate of the cleaning system within the tank, what about the pipe system beneath the tank? How do you make sure that there is enough pressure there to get those pipes cleaned and are they part of the regular CIP system for example and that is something that has been um, been an issue for many years and i think the industry has tried to solve it in different ways uh, and there might still be some very good solution that we have not found yet that allows us to to somehow um, clean the tank and then afterwards clean the pipe system uh, beneath the tank uh, or have the tank as a separate loop to the cleaning of the, the pipes where you often have uh, higher flow rates to achieve the 1.5 meters per second than you will have with the flow rate from a road to jet head. Finally, Bo, what will the future bring? In the future, we could see more being run by electrical motors that can be more controlled. Uh, so you don't do, uh, you can say, the same cleaning all over the tank or at the same speed, but they can change the speed depending on where are the high uh, high soiling areas and it's faster speed where you have uh, low soiling but then they are more like a computer controlled where to clean much and where to clean a little bit less uh, and these system has been out there and, and they are getting cheaper and cheaper and better and better i think so it could be something we could see more in the future in special cases i think so thank you bo uh, finally if you would like to invite anyone here to join your working group please do so now Oh, yeah. If, if somebody wants to contribute to a guide a line about uh, tank design, and even if, even if there could be someone more knowledgeable about that than, than me that could uh, take charge of that, that, that could be really, really nice. Then I can focus on tank cleaning. Thank you, Bo Jensen, and all members of your eh working group, as well as Alpha Laval, for providing these insightful video images. No problem, Rob. It's been a pleasure. Dear viewer, if you're eager to download this eh guideline document now, you can do so just visit the eh website and if you're an eh company member you can even do it for free thank you for watching see you next time mm -hmm.